How do we convince our questioning mind of the positive plan and purpose of God's will? After Jesus' resurrection, he appeared to all of the disciples except Thomas. See the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. Thomas was a doubter. He was a doubter with a purpose. He really wanted to know the truth. He didn't idolize his doubts. He was a glad believer when he was given reasons to believe. He explained his doubts. He didn't try to get others to side with him, but wanted proof, living proof. Doubting was not Thomas's way of life. It was his way of responding cynically. We can doubt our doubts without living a doubting way of life. Doubt can be healthy, actually, if handled well. And doubt encourages rethinking. When handled correctly through the grid of God's Word, doubt's purpose should be more to sharpen the mind than to choose to settle into doubt. When we choose to move forward from decision and into belief, we can help others along the way. It helps to find someone who is safe, where we can share our questions and our doubts. Silent doubts rarely find answers. Jerry Bridges says, we are deceived when we choose to see God other than He is. And often our view of God is covered by our circumstances. Or we might even twist the way we process events. Research shows in early childhood, we form attitudes and beliefs in two primary ways. First, through experiences like the family unit where we were raised, the neighborhood we played in, or the schools we attended. The second way we might form attitudes is through the way we processed traumatic experiences. The traumatic experiences themselves are not the things that make us doubt, but it's what we have chosen to believe about these experiences. So we must seek God's truth and even ask Jesus to show himself to us. Like Thomas, he basically asked Jesus to prove his resurrection. We find it listed in John chapter 2. Choose the latter. We can prepare for change to come, and when it does, we can trust God. We are going to discuss these phases and many others, and these might seem like empty words when it comes to reminders of God's faithfulness. Because when our minds have been told a situation has changed our circumstances, it takes months for our hearts to catch up with the reality. Jeremiah 29, 11, and 12 was on my mind the day Pastor Paul was promoted to heaven. So let's look a little bit at the context of this letter that Jeremiah wrote. This is a letter to the children of Israel. These people were in captivity. They were slaves in the evil city of Babylon. Jeremiah wrote this letter telling them to move ahead with their life enemy territory. Can you imagine? God was telling these captives, these prisoners, to accept the change. Not to try to escape their prison, their, their enemy territory, but to make the best of their situation. In Jeremiah 29 verse 7, the prophet told the people to look for the city to be blessed. What? Jeremiah 29 7, let's read it together. The prophet told the Israelites to seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. God asked the Israelites to pray for their evil and pagan captors, not to shut down, but to keep praying diligently for them and for themselves and move forward. This seemed really strange, didn't it? These captives were enslaved by their enemy, these prisoners. Well, this is the type of outlook that sets us as believers apart from the world. Jeremiah told the Israelites to pray for this evil city of Babylon. In Jeremiah 29, 7b, he says, pray to the Lord for it, because if it, that's the city of Babylon, prospers, you too, from our captivity. It's a prophecy that says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who were in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. God is enough for us to face an ever-changing world 
and uncertain circumstances. And I'm so excited to have you join us for our dialogues and discussions about doubt and belief. I pray your faith will be renewed, your spirit revived, and my desire is for you to be refreshed in your view of God as he shows you how to push away the clouds of doubt and let his light shine through. In the teaching time, we discussed how Thomas was a doubter with a purpose. He wanted to know the truth. He didn't idolize his doubts. He was a very glad believer when he was given reasons to do so. He explained his doubts and he didn't try to get others to side with him. He wanted proof, living proof. Doubting was not Thomas's way of life. It was his way of responding cynically. You and I can doubt our doubts without living a skeptical or cynical life. Doubt can be healthy if it's handled well. Doubt encourages rethinking. When handled correctly through the grid of God's word, doubt is it's true. I hope you stay tuned for our application time today. We're going to discover three things about believing God. Number one, belief brings peace. Number two, belief brings release. And number three, belief brings re likewise today. Some Christians are content to merely exist until they die. They don't want to risk anything to believe God to grow or mature. They refuse to believe his word and have become hardened in their unbelief. And now they're living just to die. So you see, belief or the decision to trust God is a choice. But what does the word belief mean? Wikipedia says, belief is the psychological state in which an individual holds a premise to be true. So no wonder some of us were devastated by deceit when as children we were lied to by our own parents. We were betrayed by human beings who loved us. Is it any surprise some of us have a hard time trusting God when bad things happen to good people? We, when this does happen, we think if this is the way God loves us or them, we move through our doubt instead of being deceived. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Praise be to the Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms in Him before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in His sight. If you and I know who we are in Christ, what we lack doesn't matter. In Christ, we are loved, accepted, we are safe, secure, we are important, significant. Ephesians 1.11, in him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Even during the times you might think, God, do you know about this? You are chosen. You are going to be able to make it through and walk according to his plans. We must accept what is let go of what was, and have faith in what will be. Don't think it's easy to overcome. God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I'm cheering you on as we reach for the goal together. I'm so excited to have you join us for our dialogues and discussions about doubt and belief. I hope your faith will be renewed, and I pray that your spirit will be revived. My desire is for two blind men had when they asked Jesus to heal them. Jesus asked them in Matthew 9, 28, do you believe that I am able to do this? It's a, sometimes a long process to allow you to prune us. But Lord, we want to let you remove the old habits and unhealthy ways that we have tried to focus on instead of dealing with our issues. Thank you for the truth from John 15, 2. While every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it will be more fruitful. So we turn to you, Lord, as we cut away the dry, dead things. We turn to you for new, fresh growth, and we thank you for giving us what we need. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. I am so glad that you've been here today. If you want further study on the attributes of God from my book, Experiencing God Through His Names, you can find all of these shows archived in the files 
at hsbn.tv or you can check out my website at fromashestobeauty.com. If you've made a first time decision or recommitted your life to God's plan for you, I wanna know about it. So please go to my website and let me know. I wanna be praying for you and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.